Water, our resource, our concern. Do we know the story behind our water supply? Do we know what our water allowance is? Do we know how much water we consume every day? How is our urban living affecting our water sources? Here is an eye-opening conversation with sustainable water solutions expert Avinash Krishnamurti. Avinash, as uh, urban Indians, when it comes to water as a resource, what should be our biggest concern? I mean, if you look at India and the rate at which it's urbanizing, our economic growth driven through industrialization and stuff, urban demand for water is increasing and it's probably going to be one of the fastest increases and therefore, how do we manage the water in the city is going to be an increasingly challenging question. But to be more specific, that's, that's at a very general level. I think it makes more sense to take an example and talk about it. And since we're in Bangalore, let's, let's take the example of Bangalore. You know, much earlier, before Bangalore was a city-city kind of a place, uh, most of the Deccan Plateau managed its water through a series of lakes. Many of them were man-made. Uh, and there would be wells around the lakes. Uh, the lakes would play multiple roles. They would they would recharge groundwater, and domestic water would be driven by these wells. You would withdraw water from the wells and use it, and the lakes would then provide irrigation water. They would also help manage floods. But then over time, we've moved to a situation where where this water is supplied. You know, mm -hmm. it's centrally supplied. So again, in Bangalore, Hesargata, the Hesargata Lake, which is now virtually bone dry, was the first reservoir which supplied water to Bangalore. And Hesargata is now around 30-40 kilometers from Bangalore and Hesargata started drying up simply because uh, you know the demand, the population of ba Bangalore grew, it was not enough. After Hesargata, we moved to Tipgundanhalli, which is around 70 kilometers from Bangalore and now we've moved to the Kaveri, which is 100 kilometers away and it's 500 meters below Bangalore and we are therefore pumping from the Kaveri to Bangalore about a, a height of 500 meters upwards. upwards. So that's the kind of uh, uh, job that the BWSSB is doing to deliver water to Bangalore. Historically, we, we had local, you know, close by sources of water. We took care of them. We used groundwater and we withdrew it, you know, uh, in, in, in limits. But as, as we've urbanized and as we've used more and, water, more and more water, we've moved further and further away from the city in terms of the source and we are pumping more and more water. That's the kind of macro picture. At the same time, what's very important is every drop of water you take, you're throwing out as wastewater. So what's happening there? Uh, only 50 to 60 percent of Bangalore is perhaps connected to the sewage lines. The stormwater drains, if you move around Bangalore, you realize the big stormwater drains, they're supposed to be stormwater drains, but you see sewage in them, mm. right? So what's happening is our wastewater, on the other hand, is getting back into the ground and polluting our groundwaters, apart from the groundwater being sucked up enough that it's going dry, you know, wells are going dry. Lakes are now receptacles of sewage. Mm. So our local sources are getting contaminated with our wastewater, and we're moving further and further and further away you know, uh, to get our water. So that's that's the macro picture. So but what does it mean in terms of how do we yeah, respond? So that was right? going to be my question. What yeah. does it mean, let's say, for me as a Bangalorean? As, as citizens, we, we are completely forgetting the history. You know, when you open the tap, what, what, what's that journey of that water? From where is it started? Where it's going to come? And when you're in the toilet, when you flush, you know, our perception of the toilet is simply a, a space of privacy to do your morning job, but it's much more than that, it's sanitation. And the journey of water after you flush, what happens, where is it going and what, what's happening to that? I think it's increasingly important that we as citizens begin to engage with that journey and try and understand with that journey and see what the implications of that journey is in terms of our own practices. The town planning norms say that every person should have 135 liters per capita, that is for each person. In practice, our work indicates that urban middle class, upwardly mobile homes are actually consuming 200, upward of 200, 250 liters per capita per day. How can, uh, let's say me, as a, you know, an urban citizen of India, bring down my water consumption 
to what's supposed to be the alarms, which is 135 meters a day. First, you begin with the technological fixes that you can do, right? I mean, the other easier things to do. Go look at your taps and see if you're using the most efficient taps. Look at your flush. Uh, do you have a part flush? I mean, and do you use a part, you know, when you flush, when you go for a leak, do you use the full flush or the part flush? I mean, little things like this. Can we start taking our wastewater? Why should we mix water going down the toilet and our bath water? They are completely different qualities, you know, just soap water. Mm. Can we find ways of treating them very locally and reusing them? Why shouldn't what you've used as a bath? I mean, there's, there's the story or, in or Rajasthan. The, you know, or in the washing machine. Absolutely. The, what, what goes out of the washing machine? Why shouldn't it go to the flush? You know, and there's this story in Rajasthan. It's a very famous story in the water sector, people who work in the water sector. That, you know, they have a bath on a charpai and collect the water that falls, you know, below the chart pipe, mm -hmm. so that that water can be reused for some other secondary purpose. Essentially, the principle is that, it's just that we have to start building our cities to do that, which means our homes need to be built that way, our laws, our policies, our urban, you know, building bylaws need to gear up to that, our plumbing systems need to change that. We also need to find solutions for already built buildings, because our cities now already have an enormous amount of built up stuff so I think you know the bottom line is our attitude at an individual level has to change absolutely have firstly the change at that individual level but that can be ratcheted up with knowledge with technology technology again without mystifying it you know with, with, with simple technology and then with policies and laws I mean I thank you so much for coming on Chai with Lakshmi uh, for making me a very beautiful cup of tea and for sharing some very interesting insights into water as a resource in the urban context today. Um, and I hope everyone who's watching this uh, does now give us a little thought about uh, how water is being used and managed in every home, including yours and in your office too. And if you'd like to find out more, maybe even consult with someone like Avinash uh, on how you can manage water um, at an individual level, do get in touch with him. His email address is avinash at biome-solutions.com. Thank you for joining us on Chai with Lakshmi.